everybody, welcome back. We took a few weeks off to celebrate the Christmas and New Year's. Hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season. Happy New Year, everybody. So tonight, um, one of the things we want to talk about first is that I know maybe you've never experienced this, but we have on more than one occasion going to a restaurant or a winery and the wait staff does not know how to open a bottle of wine. That should not happen. So Never. that is a huge pet peeve of ours. So right now, Bob is going to do a de quick demonstration on the proper way to open a bottle of wine. You know, opening a bottle of wine is not difficult. It's simple physics. It's a lever. That's all it is. Uh, but the training in many restaurants and even wineries sometimes is so pitiful that the person can't get the cork out of the bottle. It's been so bad that my daughter on occasion has had to open up a bottle of wine for the, the service person. Yay, Christy. Yeah, yay, Christy. She got it. She <laughs> learned well. So anyway, corkscrew. Right here, corkscrew. This is the knife. This is the handle. This is the lever. So the first thing you do is whip out the knife. You put the knife right here, underneath this lip. Not up here, down here. So you just take the knife, you put it on there, and you spin the bottle. Just like that old game you used to play in junior high. You then come up, take it off. Notice it's nice and clean. The capsule's in your hand. That is worthless. You then close the knife. It's very important to close the knife, okay? You don't want to cut yourself. You open it up. You now have your corkscrew. You take this point right here and this edge right here, you put it just inside the bottle, just like this, and you go straight up. Now the cork screw is centered inside of the cork. You give it a nice firm turn. You go in. You leave one, one of the turns there still at the top of the bottle. You put the first part of the lever on there. You pull up. You go down. Put the second part up. Go out. Bingo. Cork Great sound. out. Cork <laughs> out. It's not difficult. It really isn't. If you do it properly, you're not going to break corks. You're not going to have corks that are all chewed up on the side. It's very simple to do, but it is a sad state of affairs when a waitstaff person can't open a bottle of wine. Uh, Sometimes really old bottles of wine yeah, oh, can yeah. experience some difficulty. But Really old bottles yeah. of wine. Uh, I mean, you know, dried out corks, but that, that's not going to happen in, in wines that have, you know, that are relatively new. It's just simply not going to happen. So anyway, Happy New Year again. Tonight's topic is Oren Swift Wines. And specifically, it's his Locations Wine. Here is F, stands for France. Here is E, and that stands for Spain. Hmm? <laughs> España, okay? Uh, there's I for Italy, there's CA for California, there's NZ for New Zealand, there's P for Portugal, there's, there's many of them, but the, the three that I have always focused on are the three European countries of, uh, of Spain, Italy, and France. For all of our uh, label-loving friends, not the prettiest of labels. No, but very simple, very simple. So we're going to go ahead and pour a little of this. Let, let, let's get some... Get some air into this wine so it'll be ready to drink at the end. So who's Dave Finney? Dave Finney is the winemaker and owner uh, of Orange Swift Wines. Uh, his debut wines back in 2000 was Prisoner, The Prisoner, and Saldo Zinfandel. He, was, he became known very quickly to be the, uh, the Zinfandel king. Uh, for about 10 years he made prisoner wine spectator was in love with his wines it was perpetually in his the top 100 every single year and he did great with it and then gee somebody offered him a bunch of money and it was Augustus Huneus of the Quintessa folks Franciscan winery uh, who offered him 40 million dollars it was reported and that didn't include any land as far as I know I think it was just the the name Prisoner and Saldo, 
and a couple years of winemaking expertise for them to make it. Uh, then they took it and ran with it and turned it into the Prisoner Wine Company and really they brought out a bunch of new wines, uh, different, different varietals, and they actually turned the old Franciscan winery, the beautiful winery, into the Prisoner Wine Company winery. Uh, they then sold the winery and the Prisoner Wine Company to Constellation for $285 million a few years ago. Pretty good profit, pretty good profit. Just a little small nugget here. Augustus Huneus Jr., the son of the original guy, was one of the fellows that was arrested for paying to get his kid into college. It was in Wine Spectator. This isn't any big spe oh, okay. secret. Okay. Anyway, yeah, he, he, he and Lori Lofton and all those crowd, they, they you know were paying to get their kids into college. Of course, when you get $285 million for something, you probably have a few bucks to help them get into Stanford or wherever it was. Uh, so anyway, just to make it clear, Prisoner and Saldo are no longer Orange Swift wines. His wines are Mercury Head Cab, Papillon, uh, Mannequin, D66 Syrah, and his newest wine is Eight Years in the Desert. And Eight Years in the Desert is got a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of stuff going on with that name, but part of it is he's, he had a non-compete, and his non-compete's over. So now he's making this monster, monster wine, Zinfandel-based. Gee, I wonder if it's something similar to what, what maybe Prisoner used to be like when that was made from, you know, in small batches. Uh, yeah, he, it's, it's, it's delicious and it's big. We had it for, for Christmas dinner with the family. It was, it was really, really good. But anyway, his locations wines are just that. They are made with an, our all-American winemaker, Dave Finney, making wines in different countries with their grapes, but using his wonderful winemaking brain to come up with big wines. Any of you who drink French wines will know that they're, they're very, they're not big and juicy and jammy. That's, you could never describe them that way. But yet, somehow Dave is able to get that out of these. Uh, one of the things he does is he purchases grapes all over the country. They don't come from one vineyard or one specific part. Again, this is probably drives the French crazy because they love to be very specific as far as where the vineyards are and uh, the location of each wine, you know, very specifically. Uh, but he buys grapes from all over the country, getting them the way he wants the grapes, which, which is hot when the, you get high alcohol, like... The French wine is 15%. You're going to have a hard time finding a Cabernet <clears throat> or a Merlot in, in France that gets anywhere near those kind of numbers as far as alcohol. Well, you know, the, the, the formula is sugar plus yeast gives you alcohol and carbon dioxide. The more sugar you have, the more alcohol you have. So he's getting some ripe grapes from there. Uh, and it's, it's, but it's fun. So these wines by the way, are not vintage dated. Uh, they have additions, like this one is edition five. I remember when edition one came out. This is edition five. These wines are normally around 20 bucks uh, in your wine store, uh, around 20. They can be a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. For those of you who don't know, I'm the wine guy at Polly's Wine and Spirits in Polly's Island, South Carolina, and we are Got them on sale right now for fifteen ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and come see me. I'm there. I'll be glad to talk to you. We're we're having a good time down there. It's a wonderful place and beautiful selection of wines. So, everybody, thanks for joining us. Wonderful to be back. And cheers, cheers. to you. Any questions or comments? Let us know. Have a great week. Yep, it's good.